Welcome to the Magdalene Voices, giving voice to those sounds for centuries through sacred conversations with beautiful, illuminating souls. I am your host and facilitator, Maria Estella. I serve radiant beings just like you, committed to awakening through love and the deep sacred work required to not only unveil the truth of who you are, what you are, and why you came, but also to express that truth and knowledge through the work that you do in this world. If you haven't already, I highly encourage you to join my sacred circle to stay connected and updated. You can do so on my website, mariaestella.com. I currently offer sacred journeys for soulful entrepreneurs and Magdalene's Rising, wanting to embrace, embody, and express their divine feminine and divine masculine essences of being and doing, as well as work deeply with their shadow aspects, ultimately serving the world in its unveiling, awakening, healing, enlightenment, and ascension. In my sacred journeys, I not only facilitate, but I also catalyze the expression of your soul's divine purpose, supporting you in bringing forth that which you are here to birth. If you're curious about my work, go to mariasilla.com to find out more. And if you have ever wondered about your own personal Magdalene connection and calling, whether you are a Magdalene or not, I invite you to download the Magdalene blueprint that I have created for you. Go to mariastella.com slash AYM to get it. Hello, and a very warm welcome to this very first episode where I am going to be just me. When I started this uh, show and podcast, I gave you the promise that uh, from time to time, I would uh, I would share uh, insight. I would share uh, stories. I would share practices. I would share uh, inspiration um, from my own work as a uh, spiritual mentor, catalyst, and a facilitator for soulful entrepreneurs and Magdalene's Rising, as well as um, really just you know personal my personal journey, my personal transformation and so forth. And and my my hope or my desire and my wish as always is that it may inspire and empower you uh, to find the truth within you. Because as always, what I share is my truth and my truth is not necessarily your truth. However, what I have found is that when we share these uh, stories or um, inspiration, there is an awakening, an unveiling, and a remembrance um, of those who hear it. And so in today's episode, I thought I would start with my own uh, personal journey so that you may uh, come to know me a little bit better and know what what brought me to uh, this place where I am um, hosting this show and podcast, The Magdalene Voice Says. So um, to begin with, uh, I was born and raised in Copenhagen, Denmark, which is um, a country that I think is one of the only countries in the world that have, uh, or one of the only industrialized countries in the world that have um, religion uh, as a state, like we have a state religion. And, and even though, and despite the, the fact that we do have that and we have churches on almost every street corner, you hardly or ever see people in those churches. So growing up for me, uh, while I was quote unquote a Protestant or a Christian, it was not something that was practiced within my home and it was not something that, you know, we never went to church really. Um, and um, when I was 11 years old, I had uh, a near death experience where um, during a, um, a recess in, in a musical that I, I was participating in, I had a fall and I was, um, I had an experience of, you know, being out of my body and outside and it was the most, you know, orgasmic, amazing uh, feeling that I've ever had. 
And in that moment, I believe that I had an experience of um, who we are as, you know, our consciousness or our souls. And, and, you know, of course, this is, this is, this is not something that I realized at the time. At the time, I was just out of my body. I, I was not breathing. And I, I watched from above as uh, the adults in the room all of a sudden realized that I wasn't there and I wasn't breathing and they were panicking and trying to get me to breathe. And then all of a sudden, I was back in my body. So from a very early age, I had the understanding that this is not all there is. This is 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 not just it. And so I think that that kind of um, gave me a knowing in a sense that that first of all, I don't fear death, uh, and I, I I never really have. But also um, understanding that 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 this is not all I am or all that we are. Then when I was uh, 14, it, it's, it was a common practice and still is um, to be uh, confirmated um, uh, in church. And I, I do believe that I was a seeker already then. Um, I was very interested in the stories, but there were things that I didn't understand or, or couldn't, uh, I didn't resonate with um, at that time. And so I, at one of the, I have a very vivid memory of asking my uh, minister, the priest uh, there, um, if I asked him, I said, if, if God always forgives and uh, there's always a new tomorrow, how can there be a hell? And I don't remember what he said. I only remember my, my, uh, my reaction to it was, well, that makes no sense. Like what you're saying does not make any sense. And so I still went through with my confirmation. My uh, aunt had made this beautiful dress and <laughs> I don't know if I can find the pictures, I'll share them with you because I was like, I looked ter like, I think we all have that moment <laughs> where we just want to be an adult and I wasn't and I looked horrible in those. I had a hat and I had these, um, you know, I was allowed pumps for the first time. I was very white and, and, um, yeah, looking back, it was just horrible. But, um, you know, I'm sure that you have, you know, an, an experience like that as well, even if it's prom or whatever, where you just like, oh, MG, did I really do that? Well, for me, that was that. And then I, I really turned away from quote unquote God or everything that I believed to be God because that, you know, it didn't make sense to me. If, if, if How can there be a hell if God always forgives and, and there's always a new tomorrow? Well, today, of course, I understand that, that hell um, does not exist uh, or rather it exists only in the terms of the personal hell that we create for ourselves my my deep understanding and my uh, truth is that we as souls like we are um, pure divine love uh, I am an extension of source I am love I am you know through love by love for love that that's all you know all I am for however um, in this human experience uh, I have an egoic mind that will uh, tell me something different and I'm here to experience duality and so forth. So for many, many years, I um, I really didn't uh, look into any of those things, again, because they didn't make sense to me. Then for a brief period of time, I, was, uh, I lived in Paris and uh, I attended the uh, American, I think it was, um, I can't remember the church, but the American Church of Paris and had some beautiful, beautiful sermons there and, and uh, you know, came into that space. But still, st still there was something that, that, you know, didn't resonate with me. And then fast forward, I'm fasting forward because, um, you know, the, 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 in, in the terms of the spiritual, I was still a seeker. And back in 2000, and I would say 12, uh, probably somewhere 12 or 13, a friend of mine told me that I was like, why are you always seeking? And I was very upset because I was like, I thought, you know, that was a bad thing. But I realized now that I, I was seeking. And... I was I was really seeking for something that I couldn't 
find in the world. Uh, I was seeking for that which can only be found within. And in some sometime around, I want to say 2009, 2010, um, A Course in Miracles found me. And it found me through uh, Marianne Williamson, as it does for so many of us, um, and her book, A Return to Love. Um, that book was pivotal for me at a time in my life where I was going through um, a very dark night of the soul. And it became um, like a lifeline for me. Every night I would uh, listen to it uh, falling asleep uh, on my pot, no, my iPod, <laughs> which is which is something about my age or um, the time or the era that that, that was. Um, I had... I had a very dark night of the soul and one night, and the thing is, I had everything that you're supposed to have in the world. I was, uh, I was a key account manager for a, an amazing company. I had fantastic friends, fantastic colleagues. I was making a shit ton of money. I had a car, I had an apartment, I had... Um, I had everything. I had a closet full of clothes. I had, I had everything. I had, uh, on the external plane, I had everything. But on the inside, uh, I was dying. I was um, spiritually undernourished uh, in a way that, yeah, Thinking about it now and today makes me just want to run and hug her and, and tell her that everything is going to be all right. I was very often crying myself to sleep at night. And this is not a rags to riches story because I really don't, um, um, I really don't like those. It's like, then I was bad and now it's good and yada, yada, yada. That's, that's really not my, that's not my story. I still work with things. So... But one night, um, I was on my bathroom floor, and I was, you know, crying my eyes out, begging God to take me out of my misery. And as I was on that floor, I realized that someone, quote unquote, or something was looking or observing, and that someone was me. And there was a moment of brief clarity, understanding that I am on the floor crying and, and begging and really in misery, but there is a part of me that is at complete and utter peace and stillness. And I knew in that moment that that was what I wanted. That peace and that stillness was what I wanted to have run through every part of my life. I wanted to have it run my life and, and quote unquote be my life. Um, and I had no clue how to get there. However, when we send out a question or send out a prayer, it is always answered and it may not be answered in the way that we want it to but our but the tools are given us and for me the first tool that I was given was first of all Marianne Williamson's book A Return to Love and every night before going to sleep I would take out my 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 iPod and I would you know put on the, the book and I would hear her speak into my ears as I was falling asleep because I wanted, even though I was sleeping, I wanted that part of me that, that, that I didn't really know. I wanted it to grow. I wanted it to, to grow in my life. The second thing I did was I set an alarm on my phone to go off five times a day. And when it went off, um, the, the, the thing that I was, that I said was I choose love. I choose love. That's that's what I did. And um, shortly thereafter, um, I began. I think that's when I began feeling called to to start um, studying a course in miracles. 
Now, being a Protestant and coming from a country where God is something that, you know, whenever you say it, it's like, shh, it's like, hush, you don't, we don't, God means you're, you belong to a cult or a sect or you're brainwashed. And so I struggled for the longest time to come to terms with the, with the terminology of A Course in Miracles, you know, Jesus and uh, the Holy Spirit and God, you know, it was just, I, I, I can't remember how many times I threw the book away and kept coming back. And then in 2012, something uh, shifted for me. Um, more than just one thing. Um, first of all, I, I, um, I quit my job. I, I, I couldn't feel my heart and I knew that I had to leave. And it wasn't because the job was bad or that my colleagues weren't amazing. It was simply because I could not feel my heart. And I, so I chose to leave a, a very well-paying job. And um, some thought I was crazy. I probably was, perhaps I still am. Um, but I knew that I, that I that I couldn't feel my heart, and so uh, I had to um, I had to quit. That was also the year where I uh, finished my coach uh, training, and um, and in two in December of 2012, I moved to California for three months because it had always been my dream to live in the United States, and not even just in the United States, but in California. And about three weeks before I was uh, leaving, I had no clue where, as to where I was going. <laughs> and uh, it was going to be me and my two dogs. And and like a, and and I and I I kind of knew that I was going to be near San Diego. I kind of knew that I was going to be yeah somewhere near San Diego, but I I didn't know where. And so I sent out um, a request in my in my circle of uh, friends and clients and said. If anyone knows of anything near, you know, San Diego, let me know because, you know, I'm going for, for three months and I would like to have a place to live before I go. Um, and one of my uh, now former clients came back to me and said, oh, my, I think my brother owns a house in the wine country outside of uh, San Diego. And <laughs> me being me was very, there's no wine country outside of San Diego, what are you talking about? It's, I don't wanna to go to the north. You're talking about Napa Valley or Sonoma. I wanna be in the south. And, but I said, but sure you can check, <laughs> me being me. And I said, you can check. And she, she came back and she said, she said, yes, he has a house and you're welcome to rent it for the time and go. So, um, so I went and I arrived, um, I remember it so vividly. I, re I I arrived, you know, I was driving through, it's the city of Temecula and I was driving, um, it was, I arrived late at night by the time I got out of the airport and, you know, had my car and drove down to uh, Temecula and I arrived, you know, it was pitch black there, you know, I drove through the city. It was outside of the city, further outside of the city, up a street and up a road and then finally up a hill and uh, was welcomed by the house manager and then, um, you know, went to sleep. And, and the next morning, I woke up and I went outside and was just blown away because I was looking out on ranches and mountains and hillsides and, and the sky was covered with hot air balloons hovering gently across, you know, the sky. And it was just, it was unreal. And the reason why I'm sharing this story is because about two weeks into my stay, I was driving every Monday, I was driving to Los Angeles and uh, hearing Marianne Williamson speak at the Sabin Theater. <clears throat> and then one night, it was a Wednesday night, it was about 10.30 and I was on my computer. Uh, I was closing down my computer for the night. I was on Facebook and in the news feed or the news ticker on the right to the screen, I saw um, 
something that caught my attention and it said notes from a workshop a course in miracles temecula and i thought what and so i clicked it and i arrived on a page that i don't you know i don't remember having ever liked that page um and i followed another link and i got to uh the foundation for inner peace <clears throat> website and that was the um, that was the teaching institute that Helen Schuckman and uh, Kenneth Wapnick um, put in place, as um, and it was supposed to be sharing uh, um, sharing the the teachings of a Course in Miracles. <clears throat> and I was very <coughs> excuse me. I was blown away when I realized that Foundation for Inner Peace, that teaching institute was less than 15 minutes away from my house. So I knew in that moment that that there was a reason for me being there. And so every Thursday I was I was I would join uh, a, a group uh, of uh, men and women um, studying and reading and learning about uh, Course in Miracles. So to say that, um, you know, I, the thing is, I wouldn't be where I am today had it not been for A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles um, helped me, you know, unveil a lot of the egoic bindings that hindered my sight. And that is also what A Course in Miracles um, tells you. However, you know, A Course in Miracles is not the, you know, end all unless you um, really do the work. One of the things I find with spiritual practices of any kind is that they are at their, you know, their core, their essence, they're about love, but at their core and their essence, they're also about doing the work. And, um, we tend to, I find in the spiritual, uh, community or metaphysical community to be very much in our minds. And having a spiritual practice that only involves the mind is, is, you know, cutting yourself off from basically half of uh, who you are. It is also the practice that I find um, religion or many religions have done. What they've done is they've taken... They've, 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 take, they've removed the body and our ability to sense and feel basically our, our divine feminine aspect. And when we only live from our masculine aspect, then in the beginning it is our divine masculine aspect. But in time, when he is not um, united with his divine feminine essence, he then veers into the shadow aspects of himself and he becomes abusive and oppressive and usurping and forceful and coercing. Um, and um, that is basically what, you know, for me, that is a direct, there's a direct line from that into how the world has been for many, many years. And, and, and it's, it's because of the denial and the, um, yeah, basically the denial of, the body, but also of the divine feminine essence of ourselves, that that we we have the world, we've had the world that we've had. Luckily, that is changing, and one of the one of the uh, one of my you know purposes for doing the Magdalene Voices is to to try to give another perspective, to give another uh, idea of um, another perspective, really on the way that um, the stories that we've been told uh, about Christianity or the birth of Christianity, the stories that we've been told about Yeshua and Mary Magdalene and why they came. It's important to note that, that we, everyone carries the divine feminine and the divine masculine essences within ourselves as well as their shadow aspects. And I'm not trying to bash the shadow aspects because in truth they are actually powerful, powerful gateways. Uh, for transformation, for healing, for unveiling, because they are showing us where we are off. And so, 
for me, it's always about embracing that both within ourselves, but also within the world so that we may create a, a more loving, kind, caring, and just world for, for all. And I believe that that starts with you. That starts within. Um, and once you have uh, seen that, within yourself you understand that that has to be the way that it is in the world as well and so for me you cannot have a personal or you cannot have a spiritual practice if you do not <coughs> and create a better world for yourself if you do not at the same time also create a better world for all um, to come back to my story then in the summer of 2016 I began having some experiences that were kind of quote-unquote inexplicable to me I began being called towards books and texts and um, <clears throat> information that gave another uh, perspective on Yeshua and Mary Magdalene and the whole you know, birth of the the Christianity and if you're anything like me at first you'll think that you're a quote-unquote batshit crazy because it's like what's going on at the same time there was this deep deep um, remembrance this deep deep knowing this deep deep knowledge and and the the books that I were reading the 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 texts that I was seeing the insights that I was receiving um, there was a truth to them there was a it was like I was reading something but it was it was I was remembering them at the same time and um, I began to understand that First of all, I wasn't alone, and I, I, if you're still here watching this or, or, or listening to this, I want you to know that if you feel as though the stories that you've been told about Yeshua and Mary Magdalene and, and from religion, um, if, if those don't make sense to you, it's because they don't, and it's because the stories are different. That is my truth. Um, then in um, February of last year, I was reading a book by uh, Tricia McCannon called Return of the Divine Sophia. And in that book, um, her teacher sh uh, shares about the polarities, the, um, the dualities of the feminine and the masculine. And through because of my the, the way I am and the way you know I work, I'm very organized and structured, so that I have to I, I, I organize things both within my brain and also you know in working with clients. Um, however, um, she was mentioning these different um, essences or these different trades of 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 the of the polarities as they called them. And for me, I had to, for me that I had, because they were scattered all over, you know, pay the pages in the book and I had to kind of structure it. And so I pulled out of, you know, a notepad and I, I did, you know, the shadow, the, the divine, and then the, uh, the divine and the div shadow for the feminine and for the masculine. And as I was doing that, all of a sudden I started and the, you know the best way that I can explain it is that I started downloading things I, I had a revelation and a revelation that first of all was of course personal in the sense that I could see how 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 you know the where I was off you know where where I was in my shadow feminine where I was in my shadow masculine when I was in my divine masculine or when I was in my divine feminine but it didn't stop there. It was like one of those where you see like a domino where you start a domino and it just, you know, you see it running. It was like a red thread running through my life. And I could see, you know, not only my clients, but my friends, my my family, everyone, everyone was, was being quote unquote organized or put into these, I don't want to say boxes, but it was like I could see how they fit into this. And I also understood that 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 in order for us to experience 
true and deep satisfaction, we have to perform what's called the divine uh, or the sacred marriage within ourselves. We have to, 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 to marry our divine feminine and our divine masculine essence. And especially as a soulful entrepreneur or a Magdalene rising, because that is, that is how you experience satisfaction and in a deeper sense than than I think that you will ever know. I know that that's how it is for me and for for those I work with um and and I saw that was in December or sorry in February of 2017 and um fast forward again um to um I had an experience with a um coach and a therapist that I'm not going to go into to depths with, but I had an experience that brought me back to a time where um, I saw some things and I heard some things and, and, and understood more about why I was sensing what I was sensing and how I was sensing what I was sensing. And, and, and then in the summer of 2017, uh, I decided that it was time to start, um, the Magdalene Voices, because I can see and hear, because I hear from people all the time, that I'm not alone in the in the uh, in the knowing that something was off, something was missing, and um, and so that is why I've I've um, created this show, and um, in terms of the the work that I do as a spiritual business mentor, as a catalyst, and as a facilitator for soulful entrepreneurs and Magdalene's Rising, my, my purpose there is really to, um, for you to perform, quote unquote, that sacred marriage within, to both be in your divine feminine essence, but also do in your divine masculine essence because that is one of the the key points w that I see missing in the current rise of the divine feminine don't get me wrong I think that it is about time and I love the rise of the divine feminine I love how um, that essence is really flooding across the globe and when I talk about love and the divine feminine essence I am not talking about a um, unicorn and butterfly and um, fluffy way. I'm talking about the true divine feminine, the mother who will hold you accountable, who will uh, support you, who will who will fight for justice um, together with her divine masculine essence. And so what I have found, especially in soulful entrepreneurs, uh, and Magdalene's rising is that there tends to be this tendency where we've 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 grown up in a patriarchy we've been so used to the shadow masculine way of doing things that the idea of doing anything else is just exhausting we just don't want to do it that way because it doesn't feel right to us and that's because it isn't right um, and so there tends to be this a time period where you you have your divine feminine essence rising uh, within you connect deeply with her you're you're in your being however if if you are so connected and so in her with her that you do not allow your divine masculine essence to uh, support her in bringing forth that which you are here to birth what happens is you veer into the divine or sorry into the shadow feminine and 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 in order for you to and and that becomes a gateway or a portal because at one point or another you are going to be you are going to be awoken you are going to be shook in a way that that requires for you to quote unquote start acting to start doing to start building so so it's it's not lost and you won't but it, it may be it may be that if you've found your way here and that you're if you're listening to this then maybe it's time and and my encouragement is to uh, not do the way that you've been taught but to find simple easy steps to take or actions to make that 
feels right. Um, and that is really um, what I have found and have come to full circle in terms of my work and my ex the, the expression of my soul's divine purpose. It is to uh, support the, um, the sacred marriage or divine union in soulful entrepreneurs and Magdalene's rising so that they may express the purpose of their soul's divine purpose. Um, my journey uh, has only just begun and it is far from over. Um, I am still doing my work. I am still experiencing challenges and hardships. I am still, um, I'm still, I'm still working. And I don't think that that work is ever going to stop. But what I do have today, and this is a question I was asked very recently. I was asked if I would, if I could change, you know, it, would I go back? Would I still have left my very well paying job? Would I still have spent all of my savings and all of my pension? Would I have tumbled and stumbled? And the answer is yes. And the answer is, I would not change a thing. I don't think going through all of the dark nights of my soul, going through all of my rude awakenings, I knew without doubt that there was a different way. And I wouldn't change anything. Is this what I wish for you? Absolutely not. I wouldn't wish, you know, that on anybody. But what I also know is that it's a training. It's not, it's not a test. It, all of the things that you go through are trainings and strengthening. And, and as I said, it's not something that I necessarily would wish on anyone. And my way of doing things is, again, not necessarily one that I would recommend. But I wouldn't change it. Because all of the lessons that I've learned, and most of all, the peace and the deep, deep satisfaction that I experience within, even though my life is not perfect, is beyond this world. It is unreal and it is something that no one can ever take away from me. I understand that I live in this world as a spiritual being, having a human experience and I love life. And that is something that had you asked me three or four years ago, I never thought I would be able to say. And so that is really the crux of my story. I hope that it has served you and I hope that it will serve you as an inspiration. Um, I hope that you will take, um, what I have shared and um, keep it in a sacred container because that's, it was from my heart to yours. And um, that is all I have for you today. Take care. As always, I love you. Namaste. That is what we have for you in today's episode of the Magdalene Voices. I hope it served you well. If you are listening to this via podcast, know that you can go to my website, mariaestela.com. That's M-A-R-I-A 
E-S-T-E-L-A dot com for all of the deeds and the details. Finally, I hope you will take a moment to either leave us a comment or review and share it with your friends on social media. God bless.